Hello, everybody. Thanks for attending this webinar. I'm David from LBD Biotech. And today I'm going to talk about uh, new trends uh, in the medical coaching industry. First of all, I'm going to introduce a little bit uh, our company, LBD Biotech, who we are and what we do. And then I'm going to talk about some of uh, the new trends in the field of the coatings for medical devices. First of all, I'm going to talk about the particle release, a very important feature nowadays in the coatings field. And secondly, I'm going to talk about the types of devices, substrates, geometries, and materials that can be coated with, with these hydrophilic coatings. And in the end, I'm going to talk about uh, the new trends in surface modification technologies, such as plasma treatment. Okay, LBD Biotech uh, is an innovative OEM company specialized in medical devices, more specifically uh, semi-finished parts, such as stents, uh, medical tubing, and also coatings, uh, hydrophilic coatings and, and drug diluting coatings. The, uh, the more important thing that makes us different from other companies is that the, the vertical integration, okay, we design and manufacture all the raw materials, such as the polymers and the formulations used in our coatings. Okay. So, what we are looking for when, when we are looking for a hydrophilic coating? First thing, it's obvious, is the lubricity. Okay. We want uh, the, the coating to make the device lubricious in order to facilitate the, the access and the navigation through turtles blood vessels, but it is also very, very important to control the particles that are released uh, from the coating to the bloodstream, okay? So it's very important that the coating is uh, durable, uh, it means that it doesn't release particles to the bloodstream, because uh, the, the, the particles, once are released to the, to the bloodstream, can lead to some diseases, for example, obstruction of some veins or arteries. Okay, so very important to control this feature. And so how we can control this? Okay, LBD has developed uh, a method for measuring the amount and the size of particles released by a device during its clinical use, using a tracking fixture, like for example, the one that you can see in the picture on the left, which imitates the, the artery system from the heart, okay? And at the end of this circuit, we place uh, a particle counter that counts the particles that are released from the device during its, its use and classify them by size, okay? This is done in real time during navigation and the deployment of the device. So very important, this feature when choosing a anhydrophilic coating, okay? Then second thing to Taking consideration when choosing an hydrophilic coating, the device itself. Okay, and by the device, I mean three things. Okay, one thing is the application, the clinical use of the device. Okay, it's not the same uh, uh, PTCA or PTA device than a neurology or an ophthalmology device. Uh, you are not looking for the same features, so very important that uh, the hydrophilic coating that you choose fits the features and what you are looking for for your device. The second thing is the material uh, of the device. It's not the same to coat plastics like polyurethanes or polyolefins or, or metals, for example, or silicones. It's not the same, so you need to make sure that the coating is suitable for, for your material. And the last thing to take in consideration is the geometry of the device. Okay, for example, it's not the same coating a balloon or a tubing than a, a guide wire, for example, to have a coil stru type of structure, or for example, an ophthalmology cartridge that has a very, very complex geometry and have to be coated on the inside. It's very difficult for the UV light to reach these, these parts, but uh, there are solutions for this type of, of, of applications. For example, Bella Technologies that offers uh, a 3D UV curing system that allows to coat uh, complex geometries like these ones. Okay, so very important uh, to take in consideration this 
things uh, when choosing a, an hydrophilic coating. Then I tried um, several different formulations, different coatings, different uh, coating processes, different uh, machines, but nothing works. Um, does, do I have a, an alternative? Do I have an, an option? Yes. Uh, for example, plasma technology. Uh, that uh, what? Well, first of all, what is plasma? Oh, plasma. It's uh, it's called also it's called also the fourth state of pattern, and it's mainly ionized gas. Okay, and also some spe reactive species, and how it works. This ionized gas and reactive species can react with the surface of, of the substrate uh, in different ways when depending on the, the, the gas that you're using or the process parameters that, that you use. Okay? Uh, one thing that you can do is clean the surface. Sometimes you have contaminations in the surface that uh, makes it impossible for the coating to, to have addition of these, of these substrates. And you can clean the surface using plasma. Second thing that you can do is activate the surface. Some surfaces, like for example, silicones or PTFA, PDFA, are substrates uh, with a very low surface energy and needs a use activation of the surface prior to uh, apply the, the coating. Because if not, you won't have addition. Then you have also other processes that can be done with plasma, for example, etching or even coating, ultra thin coating, ultra thin coatings can be performed using plasma technology. For example, uh, examples of materials that, uh, that are most commonly plasma treated are plastics like, for example, PIG or PDF, PDFA or polypropylene that are materials with very low surface energy, or for example, metals, glass and ceramics. Okay, so if uh, there are options uh, to treat the surface, in order to uh, add uh, a coating to your substrate when it's a difficult one, okay? So uh, that's all I wanted uh, to say today. Thanks for attending the webinar.